scrimmage well we got four or five guys I just I, I don't know how many reps we're going to play them yet or anything like that we had to sit down and decided that but uh, you know I kind of know what two or three of them can do the main thing with them just trying to sharpen their mobile technique but there's uh, another four or five guys I definitely want to see in a scrimmage situation the main thing just see how they react to run and pass you know what they've picked up technique wise so you know, mainly looking for depth myself. No, look, but we talked to Walker. He said he felt like the young guys were going to help you guys on that. We will have more depth than you had last year. Absolutely. You know, each day I keep seeing one or two kids step up. And I've seen a walk on or two step up a little bit and then uh, look like they want to play and do some things. So my main concern at this point, you know, we run into some situations in the past where depth got to be a problem. <clears throat> So uh, I don't want that to happen, you know, so I'm just trying to build on things a little bit, um, you know, and hopefully, you know, I've got four, five, six guys that can go in, especially as much special teams, you know, and, and, and Coach Chizik, when I coached with him before, we're real big on special teams. We want our guys to cover on special teams. We want our guys to do those things. And the more that I can develop these guys in all those areas, the more help we can get in the least amount of reps. And it helps you through the year, you know, it just, it helps you. you you're stronger at the end, you know. Uh, the more reps you play early, y'all have seen it. I mean, teams that weaken down the stretch. So I'm just, I'm trying to plan for a whole year depth-wise right now. How far along is Aaron, and, and is he going to be able to go contact tomorrow? I've really taken it slow with Aaron, and uh, he he won't go at all Saturday as of right now. And they've kind of left it up to us because we communicate with the trainers and the doctors every day in his situation. Uh, I let Aaron get certain drills. And I'm sure he could do more, but it's like, why at this point? You know, I don't want to push him to the point, push him backwards. Uh, what he's did has been remarkable. I mean, he has worked at it. Uh, the strength is back a lot. It's not where it needs to be. Uh, his range of motion looks really good. Uh, and if you noticed, I back him off the receivers a lot. I'm letting him play off coverage, some man-to-man -man stuff, but I'm not putting him up there pressing right now because I know he's going to compete. And he's going to bust his tail. And uh, the thing is, when one of those guys make those quick moves on him, I'm just scared that he he's not going to want to, you know, take it easy on it. He, that quick movement scares me right at this point. Uh, as I see him develop, though, I'm going to – I will get to pressing him some on maybe some of the younger receivers that's not quite used to making those real quick moves. I'm going to kind of get that started a little bit, probably in a week or two. How much does a guy like uh, Walt McFadden kind of emerge as a leader among the young well, Walt's a great leader. You know, Walt's got game experience, and that's something you can't get in any of the practices, his game experience. And, you know, he has that. He's, he's played in front of the crowd before. He's had to guard great receivers before. Uh, but, you know, last year we throw a lot of those guys in. Uh, you know, we had some injury problems. And I think you guys know that Savage was starting until – the second or third week of spring practice when he went, or, or fall practice when he went down. Okay, and at that point, you know, of course, we got Powers and McFadden left, uh, and, and they had to start. And then when Walt and uh, Gerard got hurt a little bit, we had to throw those young guys in. So we've had some good reps out of Nico Thorpe. You know, Hood has had to play some, and even Harry Adams, you know, about the middle of the season had to come out and give us some reps, you know. So at least those guys have been in some ball games and just trying to progress from there. Who's working the ones with McFadden right now? Well, right now we got Nico Thorpe. You know, and, uh, and of course we call it orange here. We call it, you know, orange group, blue group, white group. And then the orange group is McFadden and Thorpe. And uh, of course right now, there was a young man hurt last year, you know, Bell, T-Bell, and, and he's, uh, he's really progressive. I mean, he's made some really good plays the last two or three days and showing very good quickness and awareness. So uh, he's working a lot with the blue group now, which a lot of folks would call twos. And uh, then Hood and Harry Adams are swapping a lot of the reps in there with the blue group. So, you know, I look like I've got five guys right now that's progressing really ahead of the other two or three that I'm trying to bring along. So those five have kind of separated themselves. What's the Sean Bell show doing that's maybe showing more stuff than some of the young guys? What's he doing? It's very smart. You know, he was hurt last year, and I knew he had that kind of ability because I'd seen him in camp several years, you know, and knew he had that type of ability. He was a quarterback in high school, so he understands what offenses are trying. And uh, he sees things that a lot of guys don't see because of what he was asked to do in high school as far as running the option attacks, play action, throw game. He understands when guys cut their splits down, what routes 
that they might try to be uh, progressing to. Uh, and he's just a smart kid. I mean, he, he just picks up things very, very quickly and uh, got very good quickness uh, instincts. And uh, sometimes, you know, you try coaching those things, but it sure helps if you have them. Uh, he's got that.